Welcome to Friends Kids Online. I am so excited to be unlocking God's Word with you today, you guys. And I just want us to keep in mind that as we're learning today and as we're unlocking God's truth, I want us to remember what we learned about last month, and that was the main event of God's big story. So all of the Old Testament was looking forward at this main event, and all of the New Testament was looking back at this main event. Can any of you guys guess what the main event was? <laughs> You're right, it's Jesus' life. And so as we go on unlocking God's word, I want us to keep in mind the main event that we learned about last month and how what we're learning now relates to that. We're going to be reading in 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 31. There is one body, but it has many parts, but all its parts make up one body. It is the same with Christ. We are all baptized by one Holy Spirit, and so we are formed into one body. It didn't matter whether we were Jew or Gentile, slaves or free people. We were all given the same spirit to drink. So the body is not made up of just one part. It has many parts. Suppose the foot says, I am not a hand, so I don't belong to the body. By saying this, it cannot stop being part of the body. And suppose the ear say, I am not an eye, so I don't belong to the body. By saying this, it cannot stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, how could it hear? If the whole body were an ear, how could it smell? God has placed each part of the body just as he wanted it to be. If all the parts were the same, how could there be a body? As it is, there are many parts, but there is only one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. The head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. In fact, it is just the opposite. The parts of the body that seem to be weaker are the ones we cannot do without. The parts that we think are less important, we treat with special honor. The private parts aren't shown, but they are treated with special care. The parts that cannot be shown don't need special care. But God has put together all the parts of the body, and he has given more honor to the parts that didn't have any. In that way, the parts of the body will not take sides. All of them will take care of one another. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part shares in its joy. You are the body of Christ. Each one of you is a part of it. First, God has placed apostles in the church. Second, he has placed prophets in the church. Third, he has placed teachers in the church. Then he has given to the church miracles and gifts of healing. He has also given the gift of helping others and the gift of guiding the church. God has also given the gift of speaking in different kinds of languages. Is everyone an apostle? Is everyone a prophet? Is everyone a teacher? Do all work miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in languages they have not known before? Do all explain what is said in those languages, but above all, you should want more important gifts. The reason that Paul is writing this to the Corinthians is because after Jesus went back up to heaven and the Christian church started, people started comparing and fighting over who was better. And they started comparing and fighting over whose gift from God was better. And Paul wanted them to know, and Paul wants us to know, that God gave us different gifts on purpose. And Paul tells us to understand this, he wants us to look at our own bodies. We have hands and feet and legs and eyes and ears, and we need all of these different parts of our body in order to function, right? And just as Paul points to the body for us to understand our own gifts, he also wants to help us understand that the church is the body of Christ. And so when we as Christians come together, we're forming Christ's own body in the world, right? And so some of our gifts are the hands, some of our gifts are the feet, some of our gifts are the nose, and some of our gifts are the eyes, and some of our gifts are, <gasps> I only have two sets of eyes and no ears. Do you think that that will work? Absolutely not, right? If we only had eyes and we had no ears, 
how would the body be able to hear, right? And that's why it's so important for us as the church, as the body of Christ, to play our parts that God has given us, to use our gifts that God has given us. Because if we had no ears, we wouldn't be able to hear. If we had no eyes, we wouldn't be able to see. And that's what Paul is really trying to encourage us to understand is that God on purpose has given us different gifts so that we can work together as a team and help other people accomplish their goals in their roles, in their gifts. And that's so important. And so let's go before God and thank him for the special gifts that he has given each of us. So God, we're so grateful that you have given us a gift and that we get to live life and do life with you um, as a team, as a body um, working together. And so God, we thank you and we love you and it's in your name that I pray, amen. Thank you guys so much and we'll see you again next week.